The um, first point I wanted to make about the Constitution is that it's a set of rules, but the rules are designed to channel behavior. Our founders understood that. Second point, people f tend to forget that there's a long history behind the Constitution. And even though we had fought England and we saw much about England that we did not care for, England had a centuries-old tradition of fighting for liberty, winning a battle for liberty, and then writing down the results in constitutional-type documents. So they were the heirs to this magnificent tradition. Next point regarding the Constitution is that the founders sought to encapsulate in this document certain fundamental principles. One that I think is being rediscovered by the Tea Party movement is the principle of decentralization. The principle that most government is best carried out in the family, or if not in the family, in the community, or if not in the community, in the state, and only as a last resort in Washington, D.C. This Constitution was written for a relatively small government. It was not written for a government that controls 30-some-odd percent of American gross domestic product. We have taken a form of government that's designed for a mostly free people and changed it into a government that regulates virtually every aspect of our lives. I mean, that is not what the government was set up to do. Now let's deal with the issue of, specifically turn to the issue of uh, Obamacare. Is Obamacare constitutional under the Constitution as it would have been read by James Madison or Edmund Randolph or even someone later like Abraham Lincoln or President Taft? The answer is clearly no. There have been some efforts by a few constitutional law professors to argue that the original Constitution justifies Obamacare, but those efforts have been few, and I think it's fair to say rather lame. Now, a mandate to buy insurance is not new. States do it, right? They order you to buy uh, insurance for your car. But, but of course, as some point out, you don't have to try. But more to the point, the states are not governments of enumerated powers. The federal government is. The federal government is a more limited, supposedly a more limited uh, 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 power government. Under the modern formulation that the Supreme Court has, the Congress may regulate commerce, and it may regulate, it may regulate economic activities substantially affecting commerce. That's the language the Supreme Court uses. It may regulate economic activity substantially affecting interstate commerce. But suppose you choose not to engage in an economic activity. Suppose, for example, you choose not to buy insurance. Could Congress say that because you are not engaging in an activity, that that is therefore an activity that can be regulated? Well, that's a bit of a stretch. Congress is given the power to punish counterfeiters. Does that mean that Congress is given the power to punish people who don't counterfeit? So if Congress is given the power to regulate economic activities, it doesn't follow that Congress has the power to regulate those who don't engage in economic activities, who opt not to purchase insurance. I have taken the position that it is appropriate for the state attorneys general to bring the lawsuit they're bringing against Obamacare for a whole number of reasons. Yeah. Not, yeah. not because it's a certain winner, although it could win, but because it's their obligation as representatives of coordinate sovereignties in the federal system. 